even after all the tax breaks that the town of Arlington Heights gave to the Chicago Bears, CEO Kevin Warren is still moving forward with the Bears' new stadium being downtown on the lakefront, which I have all the new updates for you guys here. Along with George McCaskey, Bears chairman, is speaking out on his side of the Bears' pursuit for Tom Brady in 2020 free agency and how stealth they were and some injury updates for you guys on the guys looking good in all directions. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago Bears. My name is Nick Brody, and as always, thank you for tuning in, and happy Friday. And before we begin today's show, if you're ready for this Sunday's Bears versus Jaguars game in London, make sure to smash the like button on this video, along with commenting where you'd rather have the new stadium built in Arlington Heights or downtown, and please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already to stay up to date on all Chicago Bears news and notifications. Help us hit 19,000 before kickoff before our live stream for week six. So let's jump into the new stadium news. Kevin Warren was speaking to reporters this past Thursday in England and told reporters that the team is still moving forward with building the next Bears stadium on the lakefront, just south of where the current Soldier Field is. And it's going to happen sooner than later. Warren claims that they are breaking ground in 2025. That promise he has kept moving forward. Not giving an exact timing of it, though, during the year, but I hopefully happens right after the Bears win the Super Bowl. So that gives us about six months in order to prepare and get a lot of the messy construction done, at least, so the stadium has some shape entering the 25 season. The new stadium is focused on being just south of the current stadium in the South parking lot, where one of the most biggest best tailgate spots are for the Bears games at the moment. And if you haven't seen renderings already, here are a few right now. The new stadium will have a roof conferred by Kevin Warren that is not retractable at the moment. In my opinion, make it retractable. Those summer and fall days in Chicago are unbeatable when it's nice out and we want fresh air. Come on, Kevin. None of us get a fresh enough fresh air anymore these days and at least we get Chicago Bears summer and fall. You're already taking away true bear weather from us in the winter. But again, in my opinion, come on. Give us a retractable roof. But Warren talked about what to expect besides that retractable roof. Better transportation, which we all know what that means and needs to happen, absolutely. But a revamped museum campus, public parks, a football village with shopping, hotels, bars, restaurants, something that we truly want as Bears fans because there is nothing around Soldier Field right now, especially from a bar in obviously bathroom access outside the field. And this needs to happen ASAP, along with maybe even an L line. There was renderings of the new Metro station that would go in when Lori Lightfoot was in office, and it would include CTA and an L drop-off. So hopefully something along there. And then the parking situation. The new parking lot, of course, he did not specify specifically, but he said it will be enhanced. Speaking like a true politician already, but what's the holdup? Speaking of those guys, you guessed it, old Chicago and Illinois politics. Money, money, money. And that team is trying to fund this thing through the city and the state because the Bears are not going to fully own this project. They're only going to own half of it. It's a projected $4 billion project, and half of it will be funded by the Chicago Bears. So I guess they'll kind of own it, but... We all know how that goes in Illinois. And the city and state will have their hands in it as well, so they're getting a little piece of the pie, probably more than we want them to get. But overall, I just want an answer, guys, and I'm sure you guys do too. Personally, I wanted to go to Arlington Heights, and just here's why. 326 acres of literally a Chicago Bears city. There would be nothing like it. It wouldn't be a football village. It'd be a football city. There'd be nothing like it in the United States. It would be unbelievable. There's also two major highways, two private airports for all the rich people that come in and other teams. You also have O'Hare within 15 minutes of Arlington Heights. You have two major train lines, both Metra, that can go from pretty much all of the northern suburbs and western suburbs that would help get people also from downtown to come in. It's only 18 miles from downtown. Going to Bears game sucks. I mean, I think we can all agree on that. It's great when you're there, minus the small bathrooms, long concession lines, 30-minute walk to your car for decently priced parking and not paying $150 to park at Soldier Field. It's just this, we need to do this right. But a new stadium in the city fixes 
a few things. And if they can get this thing right, I'm all for it. But right now, it is on the lake, according to Kevin Warren, and that's the plan moving forward. So then on top of it in England, George McCaskey got followed by reporters and was asked about the recent news about Tom Brady, how close he was to coming to the Chicago Bears. George McCaskey confirmed that he was indeed in on getting Tom Brady in 2020. This all started back in week four when Tom Brady, when he was broadcasting the Buccaneers game, showed his cards of which team he wanted to go to, and number two was the Chicago Bears. And reporters in England got to McCaskey, got a straight-up answer from him. McCaskey said, quote, I do remember we were interested in pursuing him. It didn't work out for us, but it worked out great for Tom in Tampa, unquote. McCaskey also added, quote, I do rem- – um, sorry, anytime you're in a situation – that you're not pulling all of your eggs in one basket. You're looking at all the different alternatives. It's the same in free agency. It's the same in the draft. If the person you're targeting isn't available, you want to make sure you've done your due diligence in all of our options. So that was one option we were looking at, unquote. Spoken like a true politician and a team owner. So the Bears were in on him. McCaskey had his eyes, though, and you could see it in his eyes, too, that he wanted Tom Brady. But then he said, quote, Man, what if, unquote. But it's history now. We need to move on. And honestly, I don't think it would have worked out because look at Tom, look how Nick Foles and Matt Nagy worked in 2020. Foles constantly arguing with him, three different quarterbacks that season. It just, it did not work. It would have been a hundred times worse for Tom Brady, especially being the greatest quarterback of all time. But McCaskey did get asked about his thoughts of Caleb Williams so far. He had some nice things to say. He said, quote, I think it's going very well, unquote, with a big smile on his face, adding, quote, We want to have a structure in place for him to succeed, and a lot of that is protecting him from the inevitable distractions when you're the starting quarterback of the Chicago Bears. Everyone wants some of your time, and unfortunately, in order for him to do his job properly, he doesn't have time for everyone. We have to protect him. We have to act have some buffers, and I think we've done a good support system with him on and off the field, unquote. Well played, George. Well played. I like where we are now because if we got Tom Brady, honestly, I don't think we would have gotten Caleb Williams because we wouldn't have had the number one overall pick to trade to the Carolina Panthers. We would have gotten DJ Moore. We would have gotten Tyree Stevenson. We would have gotten Darnell Wright. It all worked out it, right now in the moment. Would I have loved Tom Brady? Yeah, we would have won some more ball games. But with those teams, guys, I don't know if we want to win a Super Bowl with them, especially with Matt Nagy as his head coach. But – It's the past, and we're all done. Now, I would like to quickly thank today's sponsor, Odds Jam. Are you looking to up your sports betting? Well, meet Odds Jam, your ultimate ally in a world of data-driven wagering with over 260 sportbooks under its belt. Odds Jams is the go-to platform for savvy bettors, and here's how it works. Odds Jams are Archetrop tools, scans the market in real-time, spotting differences in betting lines across various sportsbooks. This means you can lock in risk-free profits by betting on both sides of the market. Odds Jam also provides a positive EV calculator to optimize your bets to be a handy tracker and monitor monitor your profits. Go to the link in the description now because we're offering a seven-day free trial if you use code J-A-Y-C-H-I and also get you 35% off your order, whether it's the first month or the entire year. Secure your bets with confidence, make informed decisions, and use odds. All right, quickly going through the Bears injury update that was given on Thursday. A little bit better than what we saw earlier in the week. As the list goes, Jaquan Brisker will not travel to England and not play with a concussion, wishing him a speedy recovery. Tevin Jenkins with that ankle injury was limited on Wednesday but did not practice on Thursday, so it looks like Bill Murray might get that start. Mercedes Lewis just... Doesn't need to play. It's all good. Zach Pickens out. Terrell Smith out. Both did not travel with the team. Tyreek Stevenson with a calf was limited on Thursday, but he plays through the pain usually. Kyler Gordon went from limited to full, so that's a positive direction. And Jacob Martin, our defensive edge, who could be coming back this game if all works out well on Friday, could be a solid depth piece to have on this Bears defensive line. Now, before we close out today, I would like to go to Fantasy on the Fly with our good friend, Dan Richmond. Hello, and welcome to Fantasy on the Fly. The Bears have a great fantasy matchup this week in London against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Who do I like for the Bears? I like a lot of guys this week, but I especially like Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams has been on fire the last few weeks for the Bears, and this week, I love him against the Jaguars. Jacksonville averages 287 yards in the air. Their pass defense is horrible, and I like Caleb Williams to have a huge game in London. Another former Bear who I like this week a lot from a fantasy perspective is Darnell Mooney of the Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta's offense has been looking better and better each week as well, and Darnell Mooney is Kirk Cousins' favorite 
target, and you saw how bad the Carolina Panthers' pass defense was last week against the Bears. I love Mooney this week, and this is Fantasy on the Fly. But bear down, baby. Let's have some fun this upcoming Sunday. Again, we will have a live stream because we're 3-0 and on live streams. We will be here at 8 o'clock Central Time, half an hour before the game, having some breakfast with you guys. Bring a breakfast beer, bring a mimosa, bring a Bailey's and coffee. I don't care what you bring, but let's have a good time. Bring the bagels, bring the baguettes. I don't care. Let's have some fun. But with that, thank you, as always, for tuning into this episode of Just Another Year Chicago Bears. My name is Nick Brody. Let's hear it loud and proud in the comment section below. Bear down, baby.